What is up YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Today I bring you the 2022 Cadillac CT4 and the CT5 Blackwing. There's only one word that gets every guy excited. Only a select few get to touch it. Even the new Corvette owners don't even have it. Manual. This is huge, guys. Manual transmission is making a comeback real hard. And thanks to Cadillac Canada for inviting me to test drive the CT4 V Blackwing and the CT5 V Blackwing. That's a huge opportunity because there's only a small amount of people that get to do that. And I was one of them. Love the top. Looking sexy. <laughs> yes, you heard me right. The Corvette is not available in manual transmission, only in automatic. And in a Cadillac? In a four-door Cadillac? And yes, in the CT4 V Blackwing and the 5, they're both available in manual transmission. And the crazy part about it is 60% of all sales up to date in the Blackwing are sold in manual. Thank you, thank you. The demand is there. For years, we've had a, asked 100 manufacturers to give us manual transmission with big power, and nobody bought them. And this time, guys, you stepped up. So if you're new to our channel, you already see that we reviewed the CT4V non-Blackwing and the CT5V, and both those cars were awesome. I preferred the CT4 because it was light, it was agile, I could kind of throw it around, and the 5 was a little bit heavier, made a bit more power, but I felt like the 4 was a little bit more my style until I drove the Blackwing. That sort of flipped a little bit, and this video is gonna show you why. Pretty excited about it. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the front, I'm gonna talk about the side, I'm gonna talk about the back. I'm also gonna talk about the details that both these cars share, including something called no lift shift. Yes, if you're a manual guy and you don't take your foot off the gas, that's what it means. Also, I'm gonna talk about the fact that these things have accelerometers on their suspension, which is MagRide 4, which is awesome, great product, great suspension. I can't wait to share it with you guys, as well as something called a data recorder where you can actually videotape you on a track and the car does it for you. Yes, I'm also gonna talk about the fact that all Canadian YouTubers seem to wanna to put the five out before the four and the four is getting a little bit overshadowed. So we're gonna focus the video on the four and obviously get into the five. So goodbye to the ATS-V. This is the real deal, the real CT4V. This is Cadillac's fastest, most powerful production subcompact they've ever made. Whew, this is exciting. Take a look at this front end. Look at the LED lights. Now this is the one way to dis distinguish between the four and the five is on the four, the LED bar, the daytime run that comes all the way down. There's no actual break in the light. And that's how you know the difference between the four and the five. The four is just all the way through, like you see in this blue car here. But look at the aggressive front end. It's all black. And look at those ducts, they like all the way through and they're fully functional. You can see through all of them. There's no plastic. This is all the way through. That bumper is 100% fully functional. Now you will see piano black, but that is only for the trim. If you look at the actual grill, the mesh grill, you will see that the mesh grill is actually shaped they're sort of shaped like V's and they're basically essentially designed to control or direct the air to where they want it to go. They're just not, you know, grills or mesh grills. They're specifically designed to control where the airflow goes. Now you see those little things around the bumper. Those are the dive planes and they create downforce because the air flows in them and it pushes the front bumper down. And it pushes it so much that the faster you go, the actual, the car dips more and it gets more grip. So it's designed to go faster to get more grip which is pretty awesome. Now let's jump into the engine because that is the most important part with all the Blackwing product. Now the regular CT4 V non-Blackwing version makes 350 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque. But this new one is a V6 twin turbo that makes 472 horsepower and 445 pound-feet of torque to zero to 60 in about three and a half to 3.8 seconds, depending on who you ask and who you read. But it is available in manual transmission and that is the most important piece. It's got a top speed of 189 miles an hour, which is almost 304 kilometers an hour, 300 kilometers an hour. That is ludicrous. It actually has an acceleration G-forces of 1.04. That is faster than a 911 turbo back in 2010. And you can also get in a 10-speed automatic transmission, but eh, it's all about the manual. 
So moving along the side here, you will see how that LED actually wraps all the way around and it's pretty far up in the front fender there. But there's a lot of lines here, a lot of clean lines. And if you notice, you will see that behind the front wheel, there is a, basically a duct. And that is a fully functional duct. There's actually a 3D printed brake cooling duct in this thing that is pretty sweet. That also, that vent also acts like it's cooling the engine. So to cool the engine, you have that, unlike the Maserati that had these three little things that didn't really make any sense. This is legit, this makes sense. As we move along there, you will see that it has the aero pack, which gives you that lower rocker arm and carbon fiber, and obviously the V-Series badge. But yes, in terms of brakes, because obviously we've moved past the front wheel, it's got Brembo six piston front calipers and four piston in the back. And you see those sticky Michelins that do a great job on the track. This is again, only available in rear wheel drive, not in front wheel drive or all wheel drive. Now moving the back wheels, there's two important things. The first one, it's got electronic limited slip differential, which is obviously important. A lot of guys have it, but what this does have, it's got something called Mag Ride 4. And that essentially adjusts the suspension with accelerometers as opposed to regular sensors like they had before. And on top of that, they have different performance traction settings. So you can set the traction of how much slippage you wanna get in the back wheels. And let me tell you, on the track, this thing sticks like crazy. Now let's get to the back end of this thing and take a look at what it looks like. Now the taillights also follow the same sort of design as the front headlights. They sort of wrap around as you'll see here and they are vertical, they come straight down. But look at this rear wing. It is massive, it is curved, and it is full carbon fiber and also got that design, like the V-series design to, front the, to match the front to the back. Whew, look at that back end of the CT4. Ooh, that's a nice camera placement, right above the badge. And obviously the V-series badge, not a ton of badging, which I like, nice and clean. And then obviously on the bottom, more carbon fiber and your quad exhaust with a massive rear diffuser valence on the bottom. All right, so let's jump in the back seat of the car and whew, look at the back of those seats. The back of those front seats are nice and suede. And you'll see the, the diamond stitch on the back seats and that red stitching and the piping, but look at that little detail on the back of the suede, nice. I really like the fact how they have the white on the sides and black in the center. It's just not all one piece. They've actually put a detail on each seat. Now, as you see, you cannot get a panoramic sunroof. It's only available with a regular sunroof. Now let's hit up the front seats and open up this door. And this is very similar to obviously the regular CT4. They've added some touches inside, like this has got the AKG sound system. And then that red piping along with the suede on the back, you can see. That is nice, and obviously the pedals, you can see how fancy they are. Now let's jump in and take a look at those floor mats. Yes, V logo everywhere. They have V'd it up, and those seats are nice. They do have leg extensions, nice red piping. But the most important piece is that Tremec six-speed manual shifter that is encompassed in suede and has a nice, strong feel to it. So I get the question a lot, why are there some manufacturers that put out performance versions, but the inside looks kind of dated? And the answer is, from the time the first model gets released, so the non-performance version, then the mid-mild performance version, and then the super-duper performance version, why is this one here a bit dated? And that is because that comes out two or three years after the original one. And obviously time evolves and things get better and more modern. And that's why this interior is sort of classy, but also it is a little bit dated. That's the only complaint I can put, but that is normal across the board. Think Audi RS7 for about four years, it was like the most dated interior you could get, but that is because they took the original Audi A7 and then they brought it three years later with the RS7, so obviously it's gonna look older. But to combat that, Cadillac is smart. They did what Audi did not do, and that is put a digital cluster to modernize everything, and that's what they've done right here. Take a look at this cluster, nice and big tack in the middle, and it tells you all your data. Like, look on the right-hand side, you can adjust your ESD coupling, your engine boost. On the left side, you see some of the stuff that's important, your G-meter, obviously the temperature, your oil temperature, your coolant temperature. Enough of me chitter-chattering about the interior. Here's a few shots of me taking this thing on the track. A CT4 Blackwing on the track. CT4V, baby. CT4V Blackwing. The four definitely feels lighter on its feet than the five, that is for sure. Like definitely there's way more power in the five, but crazy to think that this makes mid four horsepower to 400 horsepower. Any point is too quick or you're not comfortable just staying back a bit.
So for the main event, the CT5V Blackwing. Now take a look at the front end of this thing. It is wide, like super wide, and super aggressive. It looks more aggressive when you have that headlight actually cut and that bar is two separate bars compared to the four. This thing is wide, it's heavy duty, and look at the front grille. It has all the same features as the four. It obviously does have the V-Series grille, and you'll notice all they are also cut out exactly the same to control the air. All those intakes are 100% legit and they do work. But man, look at the front of this thing. It doesn't have those little dive pieces on the side to actually push wind down because it's got a huge, huge front lower valence. It is massive. Damn, look at this thing. It is wide body, it is beautiful, and I was so impressed with this thing, I actually wanted to buy one. I was actually calling Ian to say, man, should I still continue with this plat or should I buy this thing? Because when is the next time you'll ever be able to afford something that is about this much money but also this much power. Now the meat and potatoes of this video, this is the part that excites me because this is the real V, the CT5 V. You see the original one that we did on review was 360 horsepower. This thing makes 668 horsepower out of a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 that's available in manual transmission for the 35th time and also a 10 speed automatic, who cares. It weighs about 4,150 pounds and it does a top speed of 200 miles an hour. That's 322 kilometers an hour. That is nuts. It does zero to 60 if you have a manual in 3.6 seconds and if you have an automatic in 3.4 seconds, but it does not matter. Everybody's buying manual. I don't care who you are, unless you're so forced and you have to buy an automatic, you're buying a manual. But even though it makes that much power, this thing's got a ton of grip. Now I was on the track pretty much for about three hours in this thing. And obviously there's a whole bunch of videos out there of guys in this exact car on the track and you will see those videos as well. And this thing has a ton of grip. Now moving along the side here, you'll see this car is a little bit more substantial than the CT4. You'll also see on the actual door handles, they are illuminated at the top bar there. That's a pretty nice feature. And as we sort of pivot down to the wheels there, you'll see there's six piston calipers in the front, four piston in the backs. These ones are ceramics. These are really lightweight and they have no fade, Cadillac tells me, and they are copper free. On the back, again, same sort of deal. It does have the really big wing. It does have the rear bottom diffuser. And they've got this little black strip on the bottle under the emblem. But let's jump on the inside and see what the inside looks like. So yes, yeah, same sort of, and now you can see the back seats. Look at the legroom you have in the back seats of this compared to the CT4. There's obviously more legroom in the back, except now you get the real deal seats. Look at the carbon fiber that you have on the back of these seats. Orange seat belts. This thing is moolah. Now, in my opinion, I prefer the back seat of the four. I don't mean as much legroom. I mean the quality and the feel and the visual of the four rear seat than the five. As far as the front seats go, the five all the way. Look at the back of this thing is just out of this world. Another interesting point is the five actually has a dual sunroof, whereas the four only has a single sunroof. Yes, it is suede headliner, but take a look at this design. You'll also see the steering wheel on the five is a little bit thicker and it has the same sort of features as the four. Now check out this steering wheel. It's the same thing as the four. It does have the model build number on the bottom of the steering wheel. And you see that thick carbon fiber as well as that center line in red. Now check out the cluster and look at the Beautiful RPM, it is sweet. Look at that thing. It is so modern looking, it totally changes and transforms. And as you see again on the left side there on the bottom, you will see the SD card reader for the data recorder. Now if we go through the cluster here on the right side, you go through audio, then some of the driver assistance features, the performance, the timing, the nav, the phone, your maintenance, your oil life, and then some options, your display themes. And you can simplify certain things, your tack, your speed warning, your speed sign, that kind of stuff. You can change it from traditional to numeral as far as the tack goes, as you see right here. Pretty cool that you can change it up. This is a very Corvette-ish if you ask me. It's funny how the P is larger than the speed. And there's your options, your tack, your speed sign, your units, your tire pressure, your heads up rotation, and a few other features that you have right there. You have different display themes. You've got tour, sport, and track. So here we'll be going through tour, here's sport, and then finally here's track. So just like the other one, it's got an 8-inch touchscreen, except this thing has something called a performance data recorder where you can see right there, there's a video overlay, your lap timing, your recordings, and obviously your settings. Everything else in the cabin is pretty straightforward, like the original CT5 V reviewed last time. It's obviously got wireless charging. It's got a lot of carbon fiber pieces, but the HVAC controls are pretty straightforward, nothing crazy to see. It does have heated and ventilated seats, as well as your parking camera, as you see right here. Pretty straightforward, normal stuff we've had before, nothing crazy. It does have a few cameras, and yes, there is your classic Cadillac shifter. So this part is nothing special, except for the carbon fiber. There's your two cup holders. 
But my favorite part about all this is the drive. So let's skip all this fun stuff. And yes, there is the armrest and that is only showing for somebody that's looking to buy one because the most important piece is the track. Let's get into it. So check out this stat. Cadillac has sold 60% of all their black wings in a manual transmission. That is crazy. And I can tell why. Great short throws. This is just a hell of fun, man. On the brakes, on the throttle. expecting the back end to fly out of this thing all day. Every domestic car I've driven with lots of power has the back end fly out, but Cadillac's done a great job keeping this thing planted with all the downforce pieces they have. Whew, this is amazing. I'm just so impressed by how this thing stays on the road and that back end doesn't fly with nobody sitting in the back or like 40 pounds of weight. Sandbags, like 20 of them. So if you guys like this video, this video is brought to you by my iPhone because it's 100% filmed on my iPhone because Ian was not there. So I hope you guys like this video of the CT4 Blackwing versus CT5 Blackwing in this unorthodox fashion. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and as always, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.